Hey everybody, welcome to our, I think it's our third March Madness session. This one is on Chorus, New Attack Chorus Online. So we're going to try to get through as much as we can in 10 minutes. So first is the sign-in procedure. So we have a lot of licenses for teachers that have clear touch panels, so that's not the issue. The issue can be when you sign in, there is a allow cookies button up at the top. And you have to, unfortunately, allow them or you're not going to be able to sign in with Google. So I'm going to hit allow up at the top. And then I'm going to go up in the right-hand corner and click sign in. I'm going to choose my Google account. I'm going to get a pop-up. I don't know if you can see it. I don't think you can. That has I have to pick my account, which I will. It'll give me a second. It'll spin. And then I should be in. It'll give me a little... And it'll start with your, uh, I think it starts with the lesson activity. So I'm going to go through these tabs up here. Uh, the first part I'm going to show you are the things that are paid. So the AI assistant is paid. When you click on that, it's going to open up another tab and take you to the AI assistant. You'll see down here on the left-hand side, there are 10 uh, out of 10 credits available. So you can create 10 things. Um, if you decide to go Premiere, that's going to be on your own. Um, as we don't have the budget to pay for licenses for everyone for that. At least not now we don't. So I'm going to X out of that. The other thing that you have is recess so that when your clear touch panel is on, if you want to play some games with the kids, there are some recess ones. The three at the top here are not blocked. These ones are because they are part of the premium version. So I'm going to click on the tap one and you'll kind of see it's kind of a pointless kind of thing. Um, things pop down and you just simply tap on them as they show up and there's points, that kind of thing. So it's again, it's a, a recess kind of thing that you can play with your students. So those two are paid. Uh, the other one moving from right to left is the class option. So you're able to manage your students and import your Google Classroom. This is for sending activities to your students through your lesson activities and polls to your students. So you're able to import from Google Classroom. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to fetch all of the ones that I have. I'm going to pick my Google class because I only have one student in it. I'm going to hit confirm and then I'm going to hit OK. And it, it will, it depends on how many students you have. Mine went pretty quick because it only has one or two students. Yours might take a little bit to do that. So I'm going to hit OK. So it has imported those classes. You can see I have them here kind of already. So that's under class. You can review progress if you send um, things to people. You can review the progress in your class, what they've done and what they haven't. So I'm going to open this one that I was working on. I did some U.S. history timeline sentences way back during the training. And then who opened them? Uh, what did they finish? What was their score when they did this? So you can do assessment activities with them, which is kind of nice. That takes some setting up. The other thing that Course Online has that you can project onto your panel from a PC is an online whiteboard. So I kind of going to create one here. I'm going to name it just uh, Test 2 because I've been doing this a few times today. I'm going to hit Create. And this is the online whiteboard. It has slides. It has the ability to write if you'd like. I'm writing with a mouse, so my writing isn't so great there. I'm able to do that. Um, I do have highlighters. I can X out of that if I'd like. Um, I have some options here. I can add activities or lessons right into this and create slides. I'll show you the lesson activity, kind of the um, repository, and you can create polls right from here. You're able to add images if you want by browsing on your computer if you'd like. You didn't see my window pop up, but you can do that. Uh, you can take a look in Google Drive, although that doesn't work super well. Um, I'll click on this. Let's see if it works better. It kind of blocks it, so that's not too great. But the online image search is really good. So, like, if I'm searching for Josh Allen, uh, I can find that pretty easily. It'll spin. It's not super fast, but it's not bad. I guess it didn't know that I was looking for Josh Allen, the football player. Again, this is worldwide here. You have to remember that it's a worldwide thing, so you got to be pretty specific with your searches. And it still didn't really remember that. That's not too great. So, anyways, the online image search is there. I can also browse as well. And I also have ability to embed a web page. Again, our filter kind of bad with the web pages, but it's pretty good with YouTube videos. So, if I were to pick one, let's say I searched on mathematics, I'm going to pick this one. It's going to pop that inside my um, my whiteboard. I can play it right now, which is really, really nice. 
Um, I can shrink it down if I need to make it smaller. It allows me to move it places. I'm going to pick that, move it up here. Let's say I wanted to show that video while I was teaching and be able to have some room to pause it and write some things. That's a nice feature, uh, a reason why you might use it. I can add text to my my thing, if my uh, um, little video board if I want. Down, you can see there's my text box. It gives me some options to do some things. So there's some things you can do with this, which is kind of neat. It also has the ability to add Google Meet. You're able to put in a Google Meet and paste it and then project this to your students. So you could do this right inside your classroom if you wanted. And then anytime a Google Meet goes, the kids will get a notification that you sent it with a link in there that they can click on, which is kind of neat. And then you can add up to two students to edit your whiteboard. That's kind of neat as well. And here's the menu of what it looks like. Go back to Chorus Home, save it. You can save these to your desktop and open them. You can download them as PDFs, all kinds of things. You can even allow students to navigate pages uh, when you share this out to those students. And then you can turn it into a lesson activity, but you can see it has a little bit of a credit that's here. So there are some freemium versions to this. So I'm going to cancel out of this, and I'm going to move over to lesson activities. This is probably where you're going to spend most of your time creating these polls, lists, all these things, the groups of people. So the lesson activities, when you go to them, they are robust. There are a lot of them. Now, this is my lesson activities here that I've used, and I can search through the ones that I've tried and you know try to create my own. I can create them from scratch if I'd like. So when I go into create, or I have my, my lesson activities, these are the ones I've created, but when I wanna create one, I go into create and I pick lesson activity and you can see how many different kinds they have, assessment and practice. The most sought after ones are these PHET simulations, which are really neat and you can create these from scratch. They're not easy to do. Once you hit add, you can like, you know, add things in. I'm gonna add just, uh, I just type the word science in here. I know it doesn't really make any sense, but we're gonna try it. Um, it's going to add some stuff in. It gives you this instructions, you know, create a round for your activity, add a title. Um, these are not easy to make, but they are sought after for science teachers. And I can customize the content right here. I can even search in the science simulation. So I'm going to throw in acid-based solutions here. And boom, there it is in there. That's really neat. So I can mix and match to create my own. So I'm going to head back to course here. They have all these different kinds that you can do if you're in the mood to create your own. You can also create polls if I'd like. These polls are pretty neat. Again, a poll name that you would you know, add questions, you'd put it up there, you can share it with students, you have the ability to share it, you have overlays, spotlights, you can hide the menus. You know, Suggest bad words is one of my favorite ones. I'm not gonna hurt you with that one, but you can suggest them with a comma and then they'll review your suggestion if you found a poll that's bad and say, oh, this was a bad word, it shouldn't be in there, someone made it. Let me go back here. If it's cooperating, there we go. Let's go back to create. Um, the community is also robust. If you're not in the mood to create your own or don't have the time, you can see you have math ones, ELA, Spanish. You can even actually look for the PHAT ones that you want. Okay. And then you can also search by all these parameters here. Like I can even search by standards. And when you click on standards, you'll see Common Core State Standards. Um, we go down to New York. And right near New York is the next generation science standards, which is really cool. Choose which ones you want. You have the old ones. You have the new ones. I'm going to pick the new social studies ones here. I'm going to pick the grade that I used to teach. And voila, there's some that exist. And I can pick that one. It'll give me all this information about it, the ages and everything. And I can play it on my panel. And I am can make a copy of it for myself. But I'm just going to play it for my account. Boom, this is up on my panel. And now the kids can actually try these and drag these things where they want. So, and it tells me, yes, this is good. Oops, that's a bad one. That's gotta go somewhere else. So I can do that pretty easily and find all kinds of great things. And then over here tells me what kind of lesson type it is. And then I can go back to the search again. Really, really neat way to search for different lesson activities. Again, this is worldwide. So you have many, many choices over this. So it's a neat thing to actually try and use. So if you want to give it a shot, you know, you can come here and um, go up, do the sign in like I did at the beginning of this. And we have enough licenses for teachers to be able to get some for themselves um, in their StarPoint accounts.
Uh, we're getting towards the end here. If you have any questions about using New Attack Course, again, it's new. It's not our personal one. It's one that comes from a third-party company that works with ClearTouch. Um, it's very similar to what you have on your panel in terms of Chorus, which was Canvas. It's now Chorus, but it has some kind of, uh, they call it Chorus on steroids, the online version of it. So hope you enjoyed our little March Madness here that we have on New Attack Chorus and give this a shot with your students and in your classroom.